Welcome back from the break, ladies and gentlemen, at the third match of the day. We're about to get into the final one, though, Hex. This is it. Shanghai Dragons versus Los Angeles Giants is going to be the one that closes it out for us here. And we've had a little bit of news already, just hopping into things. Yeah, I mean, there's been some interesting changes going on with some of these teams happening. I don't know what news you're talking about. I mean, just, you know, the fact that they are still here. <laughs> They're just, you know, killing it. Shanghai turning it around. Yeah. All of a sudden, a threat. Los Angeles Valiant. Still sitting pretty far, uh, you know. They're they're like on the edge. They're trying to figure things out. Save yeah, three standings here on your screen. Both of the green teams that we've had on our stage today have had a very different second half of the season than the first half. The Valley have turned things around. They've got a new main tank for them too. Fact Fiction Russell's been playing very well for them after a rocky debut. Just on the outside of the stage three playoffs, looking to get in, but they've got a match ahead of them. And, uh, you know, it's always good to beat the teams ahead of you. Kind of counts like a double win. Give them an L, take a, d take a W yourself. Exactly. That's the thing. So, Dragons, you can see, sitting 2-0 at the top. And let's take a look, because that is also part of the news that's going into the Shanghai Dragons, is uh, Envy making his appearance here for the team. And it's interesting because in this particular matchup, as you can see at the bottom of your screen, he played for the Los Angeles Valley in 2018. Yeah, it was very good for them in 2018. Was some of that veteran leadership that Toronto needed, but uh, Toronto is going in a different direction too. So Shanghai pounces on Envy. They're going to pick it up. And uh, he's a diva extraordinaire, really is. You don't talk about him in the, in the top of the diva list very often, but that's just kind of the nature of diva. As far as offensive stats and mechanics, Envy really puts out a ton of damage on diva. Back in the day, back in the day, but it's good to see him here. And we'll see if he's going to actually play play a start for the roster tonight. Yeah. Questions, obviously, for the Shanghai uh, Dragons. But I think let's take a look at the Los Angeles Valley and yeah. the schedule as well, because that is something to keep in mind if you're trying to make the playoffs, how difficult your schedule could make or break your chances. Yeah, and uh, oof, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. <laughs> it doesn't get any easier after they play Shanghai. They have to play Vancouver, who uh, still a big old zero in that loss column. The Spark have in my opinion, cemented themselves as that fourth best team in the league just behind. They've not really lost to any anyone that's not the top three teams. And then the London Spitfire are returning champions. We know how good they can be. Yeah, that's the thing, Los Angeles family. Though. We'll see if the, the home turf, I mean, we are in Los Angeles after all. Yeah. Gonna have some home fans here for them. Always the super fans. Might make the difference, exactly. The super fans will see if they're in the building uh, today. But let's get our first team out onto the stage. And that is going to be the Shanghai Dragons. Glow of red as they come out on our side screen there. The redness of the dragons. This is a team that I think has so much good potential in them, and it's just yet to be fully unlocked the way we see that the spark are unlocking their full potential. But they're always in the conversation of the, the you know, best of the rest, as it were. We've got three great teams in this league that everyone knows about, and then there's another tier, and then everybody else below them. But this is their six they're going to run today. Envy, I guarantee you, he begged to get in this lineup to play his former team. Exactly, exactly. He gets the start. He's going to go ahead, head to head with the team that's about to hit the stage now. The super fans, if you're here, or the fans, just plain and simple. Make some noise for the Los Angeles Valley. There is the new addition, Fact Fiction. For the longest time, I called him Fact or Fiction, just inserting my own stuff into his handle. But it's Fact Fiction there. A long-time Overwatch player, very familiar with a lot of his teammates and before he was added to this roster. Kind of bounced around the Overwatch League a little bit last year, but seems to have found a home here in the Valiant. And it's been a, a big part of their turnaround. It seems like they're much more comfortable. The communication seems more on point. So this is the starting six for your Los Angeles Valiant. Yeah, remarkable how much it's changed in terms of the starting six as well at the beginning of the season. Costa now, make it, he's actually allowed to play on the stage yeah. once again. So that's a bit of a change. He's not too smart for his team anymore. Shaq's also getting more play time with this. Of course, old standby Brady. Agility is right there. Kareem seems to find his way back onto that flex support, replacing Izayaki, who played earlier this year. I mean, it's a, almost a brand new Valiant lineup here, and they're playing like a new team. Yeah, we are seeing the change. 2-1 right now in the standings for stage three. So it's on the up and up. That is kind of the redemption story for a few of these teams. Really rough, like Houston, we got to cast yeah. them earlier. Uh, really rough start to the season. And now, as we got past the halfway point, they're starting to turn things around. Some changes to the rosters. We're starting to see them shine. But there you have them. The Shanghai Dragons, I mean, talk about a any kind of win would have been a redemption story for them, yeah. considering their 2018 performance. 2019, a bit more of a threat. Well, let's take a look at the maps presented by Toyota Nepal. 
to kick things off. Yeah, I like Nepal. And I'm just wondering what Shanghai wants to run here because they are replacing Ding with Envy. Uh, Ding had played a little bit of Diva 4, but it was widely thought of as they're telegraphing that they're going to play Sombra when they have Ding in. So now Envy gives you the flexibility to play both. Perhaps not at the same level of Ding's Sombra, but you don't know exactly what Shanghai is going to run. And being unpredictable in this league is very important. That is the important bit. Wow, yes, obviously. If you don't know what you're doing, then it makes it difficult for your opponents. <laughs> no, that's the Chengdu method. That's also that's the Chengdu method. Different. I mean, the Houston method now, too, is a lot of fun. But the nice thing here, and this is a point that you've mentioned quite a bit, Hex, is that when you have your D.Va player, who's also your Sombra player, that is stronger for the roster. Yeah, also, it just makes it so that switching is much easier, much crisper transitions from one composition to another. However, it is the Valiant coming out on this kind of new look composition that a lot of these mid-level teams are trying. They've got a lot of DPS, and that DPS will find Envy first, a great opening kill. That's as good as it gets. They should be getting first control. Don't see Shanghai Dragons making it back in time. And so we will have Los Angeles Valley flipping it off the wall. I may call it earlier. Gamsu's right on the edge. He could contest if his team were able to get there fast enough, but it's not looking like it. And the Valiant, strong start for them. They get to set the tail. All right, they switch over to the Winston 3-3 composition here to try to get a little more mobility and dive some of these smaller targets in the back line. Taking a lot of chip early though. Yeah, Envy dropped really low, really fast, and that kind of slowed things down there for the Dragons without the D-Matrix. No fun allowed. Good pressure getting put out here by Fact Fiction. He needs to be careful, doesn't want to get overwhelmed. Kind of just hanging out on the side. Agilities has found the D-Mech on Envy. And we've got the hack on Youngjin. Well, not the hack quite on him, but Youngjin goes down. Well, Envy has already died on two different heroes early on, made the switch right to D.Va. This is what looks like all Valiant. I'm trying to bring it back, but that's a nice barrage. Gets something, at least. And now it's just Envy kind of all alone on the point. Take it, though. Take it for free. Drop down a second too late, Agilities. <laughs> double kill. KSF with the double pulse. Making the plays happen for the Los Angeles Valiant. They did get the flip. They did sneak it, but it wasn't for long. What is it? 12? 12% for Shanghai Dragons, and now we're back on the board here for the Los Angeles Valiant, nearing 50%. Oh, I just, I, I barely even recognize what that pulse bomb icon looks like in the kill feed. Right. Exactly how we got it. I think the EMP comes off first. There's gonna be absolutely no Matrix. The stick, the group up, and that is two dead dragons. Very Shanghai much. just biding their time, though, trying to get back in here. They are, they are getting their ults online. They will be able to use them here before they run out of time. As we get closer to the 75% mark, Los Angeles Valiant should be feeling more and more comfortable, but there's Youngjin to kick things off with the rally, and me getting hacked. There's this guy, Shax, who's really, really annoying in the back line right now for the Dragons. This has been completely one-sided. Back will finally fall. Again, they end up giving it up because of the verticality. Okay, Agility's just throwing it out there. Tactician with the mines, he finds Luffy, but... That was uh, that was yeah. a thing. Uh, the primal jumping into the barrage is such a smart play. If you have bubble, you can throw it down too. Make sure that the diva kills herself. Of all the ways to die in barrage, it is the most humiliating. But we did have the barrage. He does just throw it out there. The fight was lost, and we have the swaps now coming through. So Custa on the Lucio, Agility's going to the Brigida. They still have EMP though. They held on to EMP here, so Shax can win this fight for them with good positioning. I like it, the spy checking though, coming in here from Envy. He knows how to play the game, but they are, there it is. Quad hack going off. Immediately we lose DM, but Agilities gives his life as well. Attempting to find the manual version. There it is. We'll shut Youngjin up for a little bit, but right now all they need to do are delays. Delay the Dragons. They lose Gamsu and Envy as well, so it's not looking too hot. The Los Angeles Valley may have found their solution here. Yeah, late kills on to Luffy as well. 85% and counting up, but it seems like the Valiant want to hold the door. Another late kill, another great hack. This Shaq Sombra has been very impressive thus far. Dude, he's doing a fantastic job constantly getting the hacks. How many is he up to by now? 12. 12 manually on the first point of the map. The guy is doing work. Another one on Envy, who's now just a tin can. Just going to be charging up that EMP for Shaq's all the faster. DM goes down. That's not going to help things here for the Dragons, who are hanging on by a thread. Luffy with the trance. Just desperation time here for the Shanghai Dragons, and it's just not going to happen. They get obliterated. This is a new look Valiant team, and it looks real good. 23 elims to seven on that first round. And the Dragons look like a team that's not played against this kind of composition before. That's why a lot of people were suggesting to some of these teams that have been struggling in traditional 3-3. 
you know, just hit the random button, see what comes up. Time to change it up, or at least, or at least, just run the Sombra. Shanx is just running amok right now. Yeah, I did not expect this. He's making it so difficult for Shanghai Dragons to set up because every time they're trying to push the point, one of their support line gets silenced or gets pulled out of position, and then that throws everything else out of whack. Domino effect leads to Los Angeles Valiant in the lead, one to zero on the first map of this series. So now, let's see. What do the Valiant have got in store for us here? I'm actually fine at this comp. I would love to see it if they run it. And this is, this is the Valiant Buddy. really taking advantage of their versatility. Because you can put KSF on May and not lose anything. Agilities can play everything. Shaxx can play everything. So you've got this extremely versatile lineup. And now you're just throwing anything at the wall and seeing what sticks. Do we get a Winston? Oh, looking for the uh, environmental perhaps, but not going to find it. Dungeon is hanging mess. in there. Yeah, this, this is, is just mess. out and out chaos. Gomson goes down, but we lose back fiction. The tanks traded, and this is going out of control. The Los Angeles Valley will not withstand the pressure. It's a really smart play from the Dragons to notice what they're up against and then go aggro on it. The last thing you want to do in this composition that the Valiant are running is let them set up in time to get the May in the right position, the shield in the right position, to get the turret where it needs to be. So recognizing the comp that the Valiant were running and then diving onto it was super smart from Shanghai. Sticking with it. They're sticking with it. No changes so far for the Valiant. Let's see how it goes. Because you have that mobility. Again, look at Gamsu just charging in. No fear in his eyes. He's looking to punch some faces. Agility loses the turret again, but this time they're proving to be able to hang in here. The Valiant with that sound barrier proving difficult to kill. Shax goes down and they just can't quite find the, the damage on the side of the Valiant. That wall was two feet away from being perfect. Would have saved them, but there was a little crack in the facade. And they're able to find the damage in off of that Graviton Surge from Diem. And while I love the idea, it's just the Dragons are not letting them get in the position that they want to get into. These turrets are going down immediately, so much so that they're not even a distraction. I think you can run this still. You hope to get a Blizzard kill. If they jump on you again, you just drop the Blizzard. Yep. That should lead you into a Molten Core, which will cover most of the point. Well, there you go. Now you know where Gums is playing from. Yep. Throws it out there. Blizzard goes down. Gonna make it difficult here for the Dragons. Sound Barrier at range, but we lose Gungeon already to kick off the fight. KSF going down is not gonna help things, though. That is gonna have an impact on the damage throughput for the Valiant, but it does look like with the nades going down as well, it's gonna make it happen. Gamsu was trying to get cheeky there. A hammer kill at the end, and the crowd goes wild. I personally don't get it, but people love the hammer kills. I mean, it's like a knife <laughs> kill, man. With how rare it is, you yeah. gotta get hype. You gotta get hype. So, turret now, Agilities has his time to set it up. Oh, that's cute. It's an interesting little spot. It's gonna die immediately, but it was cute. Let's take a look. We have to look at it. We are legally obliged to show every hammer kill on stream. There we go. It's a baby diva. It's chill. Oh! oh. <laughs> There it is! Envy's out! t mech gone, but we lose Custa again. Reef's Custa having new. a real tough time. Exactly, the back line for the Valiant are just getting mangled. Agilities goes down. Yeah. Just like that, the Shanghai Dragons. Yeah, sure, okay, we lost one, maybe two, but it's not going to be enough for you here in the Valiant. Well, it's, it's essentially the way you always want to play against Orisa compositions. Never let her set up, always dive it, walk past the shield, and it ends up being useless. So they're just isolating back every time, jumping on him, and then there's no front line to really protect anyone. I mean, Roadhog is a tank in name only. You can just take a breather and maybe body block for your team, but there's really no defensive abilities there. So once this composition starts losing pieces, it comes really easy to pick on that back line. Looking for the... Uh, they have to drop down that fire at this point. Yeah. 96%. Oh, yeah. As soon as that shield goes down, that's it. The hook not really going to get much done. Factition once again punched yeah. to death. This time we will get Gamsu getting frozen uh -oh. at least, but a self-destruct in there. Blocks Kareem. Nowhere to go. And this is going to be the Shanghai Dragons tying it up on the first map. One to one. Now it's just a matter of the cleanup. Nobody wants to touch that green goop. No. No, you don't. Very much like slime. Don't want to touch it. We're going to a round three to open up Nepal here. And it is going to be Village, which we've seen popularizing a May strategy. Mm -hmm. And they just ran some May. So we may see May again, you say? Yes, we may. <laughs> no. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, man, the dumber the joke, the funnier it is to me. Yeah. Oh, KSF, I mean, we've seen it work. Totally competent. 
totally works on this point. You yeah. get that wall right there in that opening, cuts teams in half. Right. When teams, exactly, when you get like a Ryan who's trying to slow walk his way into the point, you just drop the wall in between him and his healers, and usually the Ryan dies. So now it's going to be a question of how do the Shanghai Dragons adjust? Considering they just saw me, they must be thinking perhaps we can see it here again. Yeah, you're, you should be anticipating it at this point, especially knowing this round, this stage rather. Round stage. Probably. It's hammer time. Oh, buddy, fact fiction though. Taking a lot of damage. He have died. Frozen. Frozen cut up, connected with headshots from the Lucio. Back goes a little bit too ambitious though. If you get the DMAC on Envy though, that isn't too shabby. Yep, it's gonna happen. So who's going to get it? Oh, Luffy going down is not gonna help things here for the Shanghai Dragons. And they are gonna get two players, three onto the point. Los Angeles Final look like they will be picking up first control. And it's a tied situation next, one to one. This is it, map point. They get back back into the mix, and now they're just gonna play points. And now it's all about, can you get people in with Zarya bubbles so they live after getting walled up? It seems like they want to do the strategy where you put two people in front, two people behind, and just try to vice them to death. Trying to negate that wall. Don't want to get cut, but let's see. I mean, they are going to be dropping in KSF. Wow, oh, took a lot of damage, right? At the beginning of it, don't want to lock your own teammates out. That's not how it works. Kareem and Koma both going down. We're losing the back line again, but Shax falling at the hands of Luffy. Now you need to come with the goods. Big damage. There's the Blizzard going down to clear the point, and they are going to stabilize the Valiant. It's a brilliant little use of the wall as well, because Blizzard will still go through the wall anyway, but nothing else can, so you're not going to get Matrix. You're going to be able, definitely able to get that Blizzard down. Blizzard is a projectile, which can be negated by D.Va's defense Matrix, so a smart little play there. Get the wall up, drop it down, everyone frozen. And it's another reason you see Bay on here. It's not just the walls, it's that Blizzard has been rebuffed over time. It is an enormous area of effect. It covers the entire point. There's nowhere to hide. Nowhere to hide if you get caught in there. So, oh, nice early challenge here for the back. There's the grab. Do they manage to get anything off of this? The wall going up, but agility will not survive. And it's looking grim for Shax as well. Somehow Shaq's hanging in there, but the focus fire is just gonna be too good. He's got it, he's got him in the corner, but Young Jin and Kareem, they're going toe to toe, and it's looking like the Shanghai Dragons should come out ahead here. The Los Angeles Valley doing the best they can to delay. Yeah, but they're up wrong. at 85%. They've got a grab and a shatter coming into the next fight. You're one away. Blizzard should charge up rather quickly as well at 76%. So you can bully your way into this point. Not a bad situation to find yourself in if you're a member of the Los Angeles Valiant. Let's see what kind of defensive measures Shanghai has. They're going to have both support ultimates up, and they're going to have armor as well from the rally, so also in a decent spot here. Would you say an eco push would be the better choice here for the Valiant? They're so close to a lot. I mean, if Kareem died there, yeah, but he lives. Nice sleep. It's going to get him out of there, but yeah, Kareem gone. Not going to help things here for the Valiant. Now it's an eco push. Now you hold everything. But do they give you anything? Right now you've got the rally. Great, but Shanghai Dragons doing a good job not throwing anything else away. Yeah, really smart. Still maintaining those defensive support ultimates is really the name of the game there. So at 86%, the Valiant are one single fight win away from winning this map. Shanghai probably only needs two. It's all about ultimate usage and economy if you're Shanghai because you know you need to use two. You can't throw both support ults into this one. Well, instantly, Shanghai Dragons looking to punish. Lots of the ults oh. out for the Valiant. Sound barrier there. KSM looking for the follow-up. Guns are doing a good job of hanging in there with the sound barrier. Nick of time. Koma, the hero, keeping his team up. And they were able to cut Agilities off from the rest of the team, unless the Valiant can find a trade here immediately. DM going down certainly could help things. Gansu on the edge as well. He's so low after that shatter. How can he be follow up? Oh my goodness, he does! With about 10% HP, Fact Fiction goes aggro. 88%, 90% here. Shanghai, can you get back? Can you even get back to touch? It's gonna be so close. They stunned me during that blizzard too. It was such a huge slam. Gamsu's on the ball. Oh, wow, the wall, that's so dirty! Close the door in their faces. The Valiant will take it two to one over the Shanghai Dragons to kick off the series. We've got ice walls, we've got dead dragons, much like a recent TV show, although I think this match is going to end just a little bit better. Factor Fiction, enjoy, Fact Fiction, sorry, enjoying his new surroundings. We have map two when we return, don't go anywhere.
The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Guys, check out that site. It's every top tier team and all the rivalries as well. It's going to be an insane week for the LA Valley at Pit Camp Rivalry Weekend going down in August. Give yourself a break. Break yourself a piece of some uh, good Overwatch. I couldn't do anything. I wanted, I wanted help, help so yourself. badly, so <laughs> badly to do yourself. something clever there. Impossible. LAValiant.com forward slash tickets. Get them. They're going to go quick. It's going to be sick here in Los Angeles. Pretty much home turf here for the league as well. So yeah, but actually, you know, it's different, be all out. different buildings. So don't show up at the Blizzard Arena. Get your tickets there. So. <laughs> <laughs> then have to drive through LA traffic. Over uh, I, bet, I bet you Puck it's going to show up one day. Like, what happened? Uh, oh, okay, I would put it past Chris. <laughs> Uh, you know. And Valiant are, are playing very well right now. Some new styles, new tactics coming in, a lot of new faces, new players. That conviction towards the end there, that's just all moxie play, right? He gets a shatter in, he's got like 20 HP left. It's so low, it's less than a fifth of what his health bar was. And he goes for it, gets the charge, gets a fire strike, cleans up the point. We do have a substitute, Envy came in. Not a great performance from Envy overall, pretty much just getting hacked, didn't really get to play the game a whole lot. And Ding is going to come in. So this is the uh, Shanghai roster we've been seeing a great deal of in the earlier stages. And who have been turning it around as well. Who have been having that impact. Yeah. They are a real threat. So it seems like they're like, okay then, Valiant, you get the first map, but now we need to go back to what's actually structured. We've given Envy a shot. Yeah. And no shame on Envy's performance. No. It's just and it's, constantly getting hacked. It, constantly getting hacked. It's also very possible that Envy might be training to be their control specialist so that you do have the versatility to play a little more D.Va. Uh. Control and D.Va, you know, almost always want to run some sort of diva composition uh, against a lot of other compositions that we see wacky stuff on control. Wacky and wild. Wacky and wild. Wacky and wild, wild more, man. Ah. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so right on the defense. All right. Yeah, no, that's all. That's all. Uh, Horizon okay, Lunacon. Right, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, on the defense, what do you get? It's looking like a sum for 3-3 three, three or 3-2-1. Three, yeah, 3-2-1. Three, just count down. Uh, we've seen a lot more Ana on this map, too. It's some good high ground, so you can just take that automatically. But uh, the Valiant, not a great record on this map. Already leading the series, though, so that's always a good feeling. And we'll see what the offense wants to push out with. I would imagine it's going to be a Sombra composition. Mostly because Ding is in. Yeah. Although I did say that you can run 
kind of stranger stuff on this one. Uh, and Ding is an amazing Farah as well. So you can run a Farah on first points of a lot of maps. Looter Colony being one of them in particular. We've seen a lot of teams run it and just put a ton of pressure. And eventually that defense backs into the corner, back left corner, kind of where Ding's looking right now. And he just pelts him. He just pelts him from above. I like that they're just really doing a good job of hiding here, trying to burn. This is all just valuable time that's getting burnt off yeah. the clock before Shanghai can actually make the adjustment. Yeah. So they're scouting, great, but like Valiant didn't give it away for free. All right, so we do have the far in the sky. It's got a pocket. DM is going to be playing Widowmaker. It can be very good when people try to dodge those rockets. DM, of course, the other part of the Carpe pair. So he is trained with the best at the Overwatch League level. We also got a little uh, little Doomfist in there too, so a uh, big old disruption damage comp here from Shanghai's offense. Yeah, you guys want to stay in a group? Let's go ahead and do everything we can to break that up. That was a headshot on somebody. Looks like Zarya just got her bells wrong. Uh, oh, Ooh. Young, that would have been big. Shaq's not going to make it. Youngjin with the pick. Shaq's going down on the defense is a catastrophe and now, here for the Valley. Yeah, now no one else has to worry about getting hacked. The Farah can play a lot more free and easy, free and loose. They're trying to come back in here, but Fact gets knocked down. That Farah is killing the Ana. A little oh, familiar buddy. flat, bad blood. A little domestic violence there. Ooh, buddy. Okay, that was a start. That was a start for the Shanghai Dragons. Now they're gonna get all the old charge. Valiant, can't say the same for them. Yeah, a lot of teams are not switching off of this anymore. They're using the ults that they have. They're going with it. There's not a great setup for the barrage, but a big pile driver will knock everyone in place. But I think you you roll with this barrage and see what you can get. Maybe you can snowball this. Yeah, Ding getting topped up as well. This is so annoying with the high ground. He can even just hang yeah. up here. You don't even have to use thrusters. Yeah, this is so brutal. And he's just looking for it. Point blank, yep, there it is. Could go for the barrage. Got greedy, tried to do it the old fashioned way. It's not over yet, though, because they have the resurrection mechanics. There it is. Instant one, instant two. There's the third. Ding making the plays yeah. for Shanghai. And this could be a very quick offense. I think a nano boosted, damage boosted far in the sky doing barrage. Uh, pretty good. Pretty hard to not die to. A whisper of those rockets will put you down. And the Shanghai DPS comp comes through. Wow. Hex. That was brutal. That was blisteringly fast as well. They have so much time in the bank now. Five minutes, 50 seconds for Shanghai Dragons. An excellent start for them on the second map of the series. We're going to take a break, and we'll see what the Los Angeles Valiant are capable of on the offense after that. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. There you have it. Right when we come back as well, Hex, you get to see the replay of the play that made all the difference on the offense. Dang, he just wrecked house. Yeah, we really thought he was going to go for the solo barrage on Kareev and got a little bit greedy, and it looked like things were going to go south for them because then they just lost their own Ana. It was the only death. 
by the dragons in that round. Got resurrected immediately, takes a better angle, gets the boost from that Ana who just got brought back to life, gets the damage boost, and no one's living through those rockets. A great angle, even kept himself partially protected with yeah. that one side too. So there's a lot of very small things that make a great Fara, and I think it's pretty safe to say that Ding is one of the best we have. Oh, the Valiant, looking very straightforward here. Who needs to scout? Just run in there with your comp. This is the strat. This is what we're doing. Mirror match here. Three, two, one. Somber goats. Somber goats. That's what it's called. I'm trying to take a bite out of them. Let's see. I mean, this is just patience right now from the Valiant. This is what we, all, we usually see that seems posturing up. Jax is going to draw attention to himself. And then it comes down to a decision for the Valiant which way, which way up to the high ground do they want to take. Well, it's kind of just a race right now between the Sombras and these early stages of the game. Who's getting more effective hacks and charge built up? Both kind of slow going thus far. Valiant looking for to bully their way up here. Nice nade, point blank onto DM and Youngjin. But Shaxx got eliminated by Luffy already, so that's not going to help things here for the offense. Shaxx getting sent back to spawn means that EMP is going to be so much slower. It's going to help, yeah. Ding is going to pull ahead in this race now because he is alive, but still a little bit behind, like, not charging as quickly as you normally would see. Both these teams are being so cautious right now. A right side rotation from the Valiant. Bring around the Rosie here. They've got Nano. They can just go in with Max. He'll get to uh, a Shatter through the Nano. Shax is back as well, so he's not that far behind. I mean, he's actually just neck and neck with Ding. That's not. He died, by the way. So now Shanghai looking to wrap back up to the top. Valiant have got that high ground now, though, so they're going to have to work for it. It's awkward. And you can see Custa trying to knock Gamsh off the high ground. He will succeed. Big purple. Yeah, that was a big nade. Trading one for one. We lose Kareem on the side of the Valiant. Shanghai's barely hanging in there. Just barely gets topped up in time. But no main tank for the Shanghai Dragons to hide behind now. They're trying to get in here. There's the rally coming in from Youngjin. Looking for this fight. They force the grab out of KSF. That's big. Fact isn't going to find anything with the Wham Slam either. This is an enormous commitment for both sides. The EMP comes out as well from the Valiant, but they're getting no kills. Unbelievable. Somehow, Shanghai holds a single tick of permanent progress picked up for the Valiant. See you later. They're down to a minute 40 hex. And they used everything. The Shatter got nothing. The Grab didn't end up doing a whole lot either. And then they double down because at that point, you have to. You feel like we've committed everything. We can't walk away with not a, a tick. So I guess they got a tick at the end, but now they got to walk into an EMP, Shatter. Grab will be coming online. The only saving grace is that the Shanghai Dragons had to use all their support ultimates as well. But a better economic standing for Shanghai. The EMP could just completely ruin the Valiant. You though. could just let him in a little yeah. bit too. You don't want an EMP too far out so your team can't follow up quickly. It's almost like give him a bait. Just get set something up. Ah, there it is. All right, they decided to take the fight to him. KSF instantly obliterated. Agility as well. That's pretty much it. And when you just heard it, 60 seconds left on the clock here for the Valiant. They need two ticks, or the Shanghai Dragons are going to be walking away with this map. Trying to see where the supports are. There's a, yeah, the taxi for Luffy is coming in. That means that Shanghai has to take somewhat of a defensive posture. They're gonna have to hold the top left stairs while they wait for their supports to get back in the mix. But one more defense here and we have a tied up series. So sick from Ding as well though. He knows what's going on. And he managed to get a hack on Custa that bought Kareev and Custa back. That delayed the supports getting in here for the Valiant. Now there's a hack on Kareev. Ding just being a thorn in the side of the Valiant right now as they try to push onto the point. Single take of progress. Still, they will get contested now. Gamsu gets blown up, but once again, Kareev goes down despite it all. On the edge, there's two ticks for the Valiant. Do the Shanghai Dragons have what they need here to get into this fight? It's not looking like it. They, they lose Youngjin, and that's not going to help things. Yeah, now it's just about delaying, buying some time on the point. No one is expecting to win here, but if you can get them to use ultimate abilities, you're okay with those kind of trades. You're going to die anyway. Valiant look to be wanting to take this fight as fast as humanly possible. They're going to be walking into an EMP. That is the saving grace here. Grav is going to come in from KSF, though. They might have to wait a second. Grief had switched to Tracer to get back in the fight. Now he's going to switch again. So a little bit of a stall. Shaq's in perfect position here. Yeah, no more Ana either. There's the EMP coming over the top. Back fiction destroyed. And KSF barely hanging on there as well. So they're going to be able to get out of here by the looks of things. Gamsu getting booped off target. It's a very appropriate voice line in trying to disengage. I indeed am out of here. They get agilities late. 
This is just about isolating targets and boosting up charges. Great job here. These stagger kills are rough. They're gonna get another. Oh, could get another one here on KSF. KSF. Gotta be careful. Ooh. Barely makes it out. My ultimate is almost ready. Yeah, when they when you got 100 energy on Zarya as bonkers, you just start melting up. Yeah. The light targets. I said out of here. It's the paint erase tool. You just yeah. swipe over somebody to get them out of your screen, out of your server. All right, next fight set up. They're gonna try to grab into this. They're gonna try to grab the uh, Sombra if they can. They might not have to. I think this is okay for Shanghai. Yeah, this is it. DM to get the, I mean, the prime target of focus here. Looking like they're gonna stabilize on the side of the dragons though. Two and a half minutes on the clock here for the Valiant. Hey, once that EMP went off and there was like no great kills afterwards, there, Shanghai was in perfect spot to just sit on their alts and do whatever. But the grab did come in through from DM. They've got a support ultimate online. Next little battle of the minds. Probably gonna be Luffy trying to hold on to this transcendence for as long as possible. And Shanghai could just take this fight to them though on the defense using EMP. Ding is charging it very quickly. He's doing a good job of it. He's got that. He started background. really slow. Really, really slow. He did. I mean, consider Shaxx died and he was still neck and neck with Ding. That's how slow Ding was charging. So, but now, now he seems to be doing a bit better here. He's in decent position right around the corner, straight into the room. Perhaps sneaks it. This can get really fun. Yep, there it is. Instant death for Grieve. Out in the open, nowhere to go. Fact Mission and KSF just perfectly done. And it's off the back of a rally. Yeah. Luffy, be careful. It's off the back of a rally and, e and an EMP for Shanghai. Good ultimate usage there. Keeps their economy in decent shape. However, the Valiant have been building up ultimates, not losing any there. Why? Well, that's the, kind of the downside of EMPing a team. You don't give them a chance to make mistakes and throw in ultimates because, well, they quite literally can't. So now the Valiant have everything that they need. All they need is Shaxx to get an EMP. And with one minute left, I think you just take this as your last good fight. You set it up, you throw in as much as you need. Oh, they're working on that six pack and it's about to get cracked open here. Should take long for agilities. There it is, EMP going off. He doesn't get Luffy though. Yeah, he only gets three and Luffy is still hanging out. You're right, the trance is there. And there it is, sure enough, trance comes out. Grab gonna get used here as well. Luffy hanging out on the edge, dancing it. Gamsu takes out Agilities, and that's gonna kick things off here. He even survives. Back Fiction and Agilities out of the fight. Shax is surely gonna go down on the backside as well here. And Kareem, I mean, he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ding, but the damage is done, Hex. This yeah. is it. This one is pretty much over. This map is over. Ding will die late, but he will respawn in time and will very even likely passively charge up his EMP. It's just a great play from Luffy there. It's all about the Zenyatta staying out of the range. Uh, the top down map showed us they were so spread out. They were aware of the threat of EMP and played around it perfectly. And now the Valiants are going to have to find a miracle. Yeah, the struggle right now. It's going to be real. Need a touch and they will have it. Shax gets beamed immediately by DM. Disaster. There's the shatter as Achilles tries to come around. We get the EMP from Ding. They need to get the follow-up kills though. Fact Fiction gonna go, and this is Ding over the top. Nowhere for Custa to get run to, and this is going to be the Los Angeles Valley getting overwhelmed one after another. No way for them to hang in here. Gamsu, it was so easy, he was even taking a nap at the end of it, Hex. Better ult execution overall, better economics going forward for Shanghai, and as I mentioned, we've got a match on our hands. 1-1 going into the half. Yeah, tied up, both these teams showing their fangs. We'll hear from the halftime crew. In just a moment. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan, every rival, every moment, every match and when everyone watching expects the best they perform with the best
The Valiant came out strong in map one, but the Shanghai Dragons were able to bring it back to tie things up at one apiece at the break. What's up, everybody? It is halftime. Once again, Malik here. I got Zoe and Sideshow. Now, both of these teams sporting new looks going into this game. For the Shanghai Dragons, they decided to give their new off tank a little gameplay. Envy's in, Ding's out, so it was all wings out because Shax looked really good on that Sombra in that first map. <laughs> Like How long bitch. have you been sitting on that? That's the question. I'm an MC. I have to do <laughs> Yeah, I think it's interesting that Shanghai have decided to play Envy when he hasn't been with the team that much. Right. It started out with him on the Sombra. A poor translocator spot instantly taken down. Switches over to the Diva, which was what we expected to see from him. He has presumably been brought onto this lineup to play majority. You would think so, yeah, but I I just did not like that the normal uh, triple tank, triple support look from the Dragons. I do think they look a lot stronger when they have Ding in, when they have more versatility, when they are able to play a little bit more aggressive with that Zombra uh, or anything else which Ding plays for them. Uh, overall, it did end up being a close-ish match against the Valiant. Yeah. However, not really convinced with Envy in the lineup just yet. Right. Yeah, I think he needs a little bit more time to be able to work his way in. I, it's it's good that they're adding that flexibility because he can play the Sombra as well. But I totally agree with you that they look a lot better with Ding in the lineup at the moment. Indeed, indeed. And speaking of which, moving on to the second map, Horizon, Ding in. And he was huge. He looked really good getting back into the game. And also, Shax uh, for the Valiant was looking good as well, too. Yeah, yeah. he was, actually. I was actually uh, fairly impressed. I mean, you guys don't see the numbers, but we're in the back do. And when we did compare Shax as well as Ding, just number-wise, I do think that Shax actually was able to kind of hold his own against yeah. one, if not the best Sombra we have in the league. And Ding comes in and essentially just makes his presence known, though. It, it, it was like the Shanghai Dragons to know how to play around Ding on the Sombra way better than they know how to play the generic triple tank, triple support. When they get the hacks, they're able to follow up. He hacks Custer, denies Soundbarrier, they push. They know exactly what to do when Ding's in the lineup, and it just looks way smoother from them. And, and here you can see the statistics that you were talking about between them. Ding, even with less time played, looking better overall. They did win the fight, but as you said, Shax hasn't really played that much. It's his first time on the Owl stage, so yeah. still a fairly reasonable showing from him. Yeah, even, even though it's, it's his first time, though, I feel like he's been performing pretty strong so far. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised to see how well he seems to match with the team. I think uh -huh. uh, the majority of the issues are never really, or at least it never looks like it is due to some communication issues. So, um, yeah, whatever they're doing, they've been uh, doing a good job at implementing checks into the lineup. All right, so as we move into the second half, uh, are you guys giving the edge to any particular team moving forward? I would still give the edge to Shanghai. I mean, okay. these two teams matched up, and it was Shanghai that came away with the win. So I like the fact that Valiant are pivoting slightly. They have a new strat coming in here, utilizing Shax. I'm not sure it'll be enough, though. I think with Ding in the lineup, they should take the win. I think so, too. I think if uh, they stick to Ding and not going back to play anything but what they're really good at, they should have it. They should be the better team. All right. Well, guys, we're going to find out in a bit now. Ding from the Shanghai Dragons is widely regarded as one of the best Sombras in the league. We had a chance to sit down with the Rising Star and get some pointers on how to get the most out of one of the most influential heroes in the game today. This is Game Set, sponsored by Omen by HP. Ding's got that EMP locked and loaded now. Whoa, it's a big EMP. Oh, oh, Ding! Showing the power of that Sombra. Hello, I'm Yang Jinhyuk, nickname is Ding. 상하이 드래곤즈에 소속하고 있습니다. 순번의 장점은 해킹했을 때 상대방이 스킬을 못 쓴다는 게 가장 큰 장점인 것 같아요. 순브라가 해킹을 잘할 수 있는 방법은 상대가 의식 못 하는 타이밍이 있는데 예를 들어 우리 팀이 싸우고 있는 상황에서 해킹을 건다던가 아니면 상대가 오기 전에 먼저 선 해킹을 거는 방법이 있는 것 같아요. 해킹할 때 1순위는 라인이 좋긴 한데 사실상 상대 팀으로서 라인 해킹을 하기 쉽게끔 안 해가지고 디바나 자리아 또는 루시우를 1순위로 두고 있습니다. 스킬을 쓰기 좋은 타이밍은 상대방이 들어오기 전에 먼저 앞에서 이제 합류한 상태에서 쓰면은 6인공이 들어갈 확률이 높기 때문에 이렇게 주로 쓰는 편이고요. EMP catches everyone. 일단 기본 세팅은 프레임은 이제 모니터에 맞게끔 설정해 주시고 저는 낮음에 렌더링만 딱 100으로 맞춰놓고 하는 편이에요. 손브라 감도는 10으로 쓰고요. 두른 손은 원미 십자선을 쓰는데 이게 손브라가 판 퍼짐이 있기 때문에 원하고 같이 씁니다. 십자선하고. 
솔저랑 손브라랑 거의 비슷한 이유는 자리를 잡고 포지션을 잡고 치는 영웅이기 때문에 비슷하다 봅니다. 거의 솔저랑 비슷하게 쏘시면 은 좋습니다. 손브라로 가장 선호하는 맵은 부산이고요. 손브라 처음에 나갈 때 역행을 여기다 깔아두고 손브라 역행이 안 보여요. 이게 잘 자세히 보지 않으면 잘안 보이고 앞에 좀 나갔을 때는 여기 사이에 들어가면 여기도 들어가거든요. 손브라 역행 위치 하나는 여기 하나가 좋습니다. 이게 좋은 게 손브라 역행을 탔을 때 내려오고 바로 힙팩을 먹을 수 있을 있기 뿐더러 여기 거점에 바로 다시 싸울 수 있는 곳이라서 좋습니다. 여기는 역행 숨기는데 지붕이 밖에 없는 것 같아요. 이것 좀더 지붕이. 저기 지붕에다 숨길 수 있는데 이게 좋은 점이 역행을 타고 바로 해킹을 시도하고 제 게임셋 영상을 시청해 주셔서 감사하고 좀더 나은 승부라 플레이어가 되시길 바라겠습니다. Ding just absolutely smashing it EMP after EMP. Ding is a great s o m b r a and it's just the Ding show. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. That was the halftime show, and we got to learn a little bit about how Ding approaches the game. I mean, right now, what we saw from him on the second map, uh, yeah, it's all playing out the way that he predicts it. Uh, he is just wrecking face, I think is what it's called. Yes, I believe that's in the dictionary, technical yeah, term. Exactly. Wrecking, wrecking Picture face. Picture of him next to it, too. Because he's got that face, it's a valiant face, you know, and he's just, uh, he's just perpetually smashing it. Yeah, I, this is a good matchup. It's much better than I think a lot of people thought it was going to be, in a large part because the Valiant are not being stubborn. And we've seen a lot of teams just come out with new looks of, guys, something's got to give. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> you know the rest of that. Slowly <laughs> losing their minds, like getting bug-eyed, looking into the camera. And they've made a lot of roster changes, and now they have time to gel together, practice together. The Dragons are a premier team in this league. Top eight, I think, is a very reasonable for them. And now we're one-to-one. -one. Now it's essentially a best of three going forward. And our next map will be Eichenwalda. And I would love to see more Ding Farah. Yeah, no, this is going to be nice, too. It changes it up. We've been getting a lot of Numbani, you and I. So, I mean, to actually get some Eichenwald here. I like Numbani, though. Yeah, Numbani's nice. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, variety. Variety. variety, exactly. I just like Eichenwalda because I want to say it wrong four or five exactly. different times and just watch steam come out of Zoe's. Yes. <laughs> she gets so mad. It's not pronounced that way. Well, let me put my Midwestern on it. Eichenwald. Eichen Welcome Eichen to Eichenwald. Ah, oh, man, it's Eichenwald. <laughs> All 
All right, defensively, we do know what this team is going to run because they can't go back to spawn. The Valiant's on the defense. Going to show us a little 76 in the mix. Also, used to be a very good 76 map because of right here. Yep. Very much like Numbani, you can put Ana up here, a 76 up here, and you can always run away. You can dodge rockets, and they're going to put agilities on the fire gun. I love this. Yeah, the agilities of Farah. Farah. Oh, no! Or you're just going to get picked. Immediately. Casa trying to go for the res. No cover. Oh, disaster. It's a disaster for the defense. Valiant, what do you do? That's like was an unresable spot, but they went for it anyway, because if you don't get it, you probably lose the fight. So you almost have to take that risk. Oh, this one is over before it started. 76 is up top trying to get something done. Maybe they can stall this, but not in the position they're in. DM just soloing them. No, you know, no problem. Just gonna send Fact Fiction back to spawn real quick. Yeah, let's see right, exactly let's see. what happened here. It's grapple shot. Perfect pivot. No way. No what? way. Can we just run that the rest of the match? Can we watch it again. I, I mean, we got time. Saw it. It's not going anywhere. I barely saw that pixel. Put it on again. Nothing's oh. gonna happen. The card isn't moving. Okay. So, um. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, that's what happens. I mean, that's what can happen when you peek like that. You get, a, you get a Widow ready, ready and waiting for you. Los Angeles has switched. This is largely regarded as one of the maps that you almost have to run a 3-3 on second point. Um, even Houston will run 3-3 on the second point. It's just that good. But Shanghai's continuing the offensive DPS. Ding! Oh, all that healing, but Diem will die. Well, that was, uh, some would say, close. But they do manage to stabilize here, the Valiant. So, five minutes on the clock, though, for Shanghai. They got a bit of time to work with here, Hex. Good night, sweet prince. I hardly knew ye. <laughs> I wonder if they stick on this, too. Because they do have the big combination of using a nano barrage. It could get EMP'd, but I think that Shanghai's gonna give this one more go. Try to get through this doorway into a little bit more open spaces. They're getting pushed all the way back, though. Huge EMP. But now I think you can even stick with it, especially because you just got EMP'd. Now you don't, you don't have to fight into it. No more EMPs to worry about. But they really just got Kareev to make your life annoying if you're ding. You just plummet out of the sky here, straight into it. gomsu has gone in with the mines. There it is, the boost. He's boosted! There's nothing here to stop him! There's one, two! Looking for a third! Ding! I mean, it wasn't as clean as what we saw before, but... It worked. Still, total Take obliteration. It. Reef cleaned up at the end. So they went in and died really aggro there, but it did set up the space needed. They started to change their composition, but not entirely. They're still in the Fair Mercy, but DM's gone off of DPS over to the Zarya. Youngjin is on the Burkita as well. So they've kind of got a strange hybrid here, but now that you have control, you can just rain rockets right here. A lot of chip damage going in. Already 70% on the next barrage. Buddy, oh, he's gonna get there. He's gonna get there. Look at this. They're just taking so much damage. You got multiple targets like that. You're gonna have a field day, because guess what? You get to go in and plummet. Oh, this is, he was just a little bit too far, just a little bit too far away from the grab. That could have been amazing. Yeah, there's a great deal of healing that came through for Los Angeles. He was unable to finish Kareev, so he was able to keep his team alive with those long distance darts. And now Valiant will take advantage of this window. Halt the push. I'd imagine this is a full sail change now for Shanghai. Yeah. Just didn't go to Sombra here. Yep. I mean, now they've got time, though. Three minutes. Yeah. And they're right on the second point. You want to make these switches with e uh, at least two minutes left. Almost every pro player can charge their ultimate ability in two minutes or less. So you want to make sure that you at least get one chance at an even fight. Not going to be this one, though, because they are way behind, and EMP sits on the perch. They're pushing. A little bit of pressure from Sombra on the cart. Is this a yeet? Uh, it's not a safe Yobi. No, he gets knocked off. A nice check. What's up? I like that. Attention to detail. Gamsu goes down. Back fiction with the boost. Now, so far, the Valiant are stabilizing, but these are, again, the eco pushes for the Shanghai Dragons. If they get anything out of the Valiant, awesome. Yeah. I don't and know they're if still working enough, though. It was just the boost. It's not the biggest impact ability. It's a nice sleep. I don't think they can follow this up. No, definitely not. How about the rest of the team rotating in? Let's see. Uh, you got Luffy. Now we're going to have the boost on the here for Shanghai Dragons. That could go on to Gamsu, so you can get that shatter coming up. All the quicker. 
Uh, it's really just Ding needs to uh, start yep. getting his own. There it is. There it is. The hack on a Kareem. No support. Possible. That's so brilliant. Just making it so difficult. Yep, without the bio nade, we do get the EMP going off here for Shanghai, but they are still right on the doorstep. If they get another follow-up kill, it's going to get so difficult here for the Valiant. You've got Custa trying to delay things. I mean, they got defensive EMP oh. out of the Valiant as well, and it ended up with nothing. Shax has had his good moments and his questionable moments. That one falls into the ladder column there. Think now they're, they're so stylish. Yeah, now they're ahead on the EMP race. So they're going to grab second point with two and a half remaining. Asleep on the Sombra. Can they finish this kill? Oh, what a sick bubble, though. Uh, it's not going to matter in the end. Shaq still goes down. Agility's hanging on by a thread. There's the rally. Going to top him up. Ding. Nice silence on Acosta. Still, they do get that second point. There's the EMP. Monstrous. It hits everybody as well as the bio nade for Luffy. Yeah, EMP anti nade just should be its own classification of ultimate ability, because that's sick to get that going through there. And the Valiant have simply not been able to capitalize on what should be game-changing ultimate abilities. You've had thrown in EMPs in probably lost situations. The grabs are not coming through correctly. And there's not even a transcendence on the side of Shanghai. How they're lacking to get value out of these Gravitons is a little bit ridiculous. Ah, oh, there it is. On their way to Value Town here, perhaps DM pins them to the wall. Kareem somehow survives it. So much getting used by the Valiant, though, and they are barely hanging in there, whereas Koma decides now's the time to sound barrier. There's the boost going out onto him as well. One for one trade despite it all. Kareem trying desperately to keep the team up. Might not be enough, though, for survive here for the Valiant. KSF boosted. Full energy as well. So difficult to survive versus this kind of pressure. It's gonna get grab up during this fight as well. There should be an EMP as well. The Valiant have made this take long enough that they have a big advantage. This will be cleaned up easily. And the Valiant hold on at the last second. One minute remains for the Shanghai offense, but the only check mark that matters is next to Ding's name. Ah, oh, this one is so much somber be somber here. Who hits the button better? Essentially, there's just they're just right there on the third point. Yep, there it is. Ding, he's set up. He knows what's going on. Yeah, I want to see where Custa's position too, because he's the only support alt that can really impact the next fight if they do get EMP. Oh, Shax, that's it. Nice. They get rid of that one. Hold on to theirs. Yep. I mean, Youngjin had the rally out, but that's it. You take it to him knowing that your next fight is very likely based around getting a boost onto Bact or KSF and then getting the tank ultimate after that. So you guarantee win that fight. A huge back cap happening. Oh. Oh, barely gets there. Barely gets there, but now they're right on the doorstep. They are right there. This fight, they could get the three points. 20 seconds left on the clock. Shanghai, look at all the check marks they've got working on it. Staying in the back line. Oh, sleep! Kareem! Clutch sleep, making all the difference. Shanghai Dragons down. He cancels out the EMP. Now it's a Hail Mary attempt from the Shanghai Dragons. They get the shatter in. But the Valiant pouring on the pressure. There's the grenade. They're trading back and forth. This still favors the defense. And the Dragons denied by Kareem. How to win a fight with a single sleep dart. I can't believe the dragons are even still in this. They will get grabbed. The barrier comes down, but it should be all the cleanup they need. Ding goes down again. So sick. How Koma and Youngjin are alive is beyond me. It is now clear that they are not alive. There you go, man in question, hero of the hour for Los Angeles Valiant. Some people may have forgotten about Kareem, but you've been put on notice. A play of the map so far. The Valiant in a good position to take the lead in this series. They'll give a go on offense when we return. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
back into the action. That is not a save spot. We don't happen to have those in the beginning packs, but we do happen to have sick clutch plays from Kareem. Look at that. The spot and the instant sleep does not miss it. So sick. During the animation, EMP canceled. Electricity stays on thanks to your power form in Kareem. And I mean, we talked about him so much last year. It's great to see him returning to form here. Los Angeles, offensively, looks like they want to start running a Far Mercy as well. I don't know if KSF's going to stay on this. No, probably went for an early grapple shot, did not connect. So we have a Tracer instead on the field. It's probably Ding just being like, I'm not going to make the mistake that it's really made, right, by yeah. picking aggro. Yeah. Well, and this is why it's such an interesting map, because defensively running a Farah is super viable because of this tower here. You have all the defense in the world. You can play the architecture extremely well. He's got to be careful. Ooh, getting tagged twice. Dangerous. Well, this is a very calm approach here from the Valiant. They're just sussing things out. It's back over on the Widows to counter the Fara. Oh, got to be careful here. Ding dropping dangerously low. Coma hacked in the back line. Will be able to top up his teammate. Still not quite found their way in here yet. And KSF, he's back on it. So we will have that Widow. Body shot, not charged. Coma survives. Ding's doing a great job of playing these angles. You gotta get the pressure on KSF. You cannot just let him take in pot shots like this. Now they're trying to, but they're trying to do it safely, poking around buildings, using the travel time of the projectiles to hit spots where he wants to be but can't get. There is a boost ready. I wonder if it just comes out raw onto maybe agilities. Oh, KSF barely survived that one. That was tight. There it is, Kareem! Mid-air rocket from Agility, he's trading one for one, but Kareev going down is not going to help things. We lose Koma, Agility needs to come up with the goods here, but it's just not going to happen. The res, though, this buys the time for the res to go up on Kareev. Butter trades, butter trades for the value here, they can definitely clean this up. Only for Kareev to die again. You lose Gamsu on the side of Shanghai, though, and that's certainly not going to help things. You're down to two remaining versus four alive for the Valiant, and that will be a successful take here for the Valiant. Oh, it just doesn't make it out of time. Youngjin trying to delay, but again, it's pretty much just the Youngjin. And now you're going to lose a delayed DM as well. I think Youngjin is just obligated to always touch a payload if he sees it after that atrocious C9 earlier this year. He uh. stepped off it on Dorado, so if, if there's a cart on the screen, Youngjin's going to touch it. That's just going to happen from now on. I see KSF staying on this Widow. You can always pop eyes here and at least give your team the sight. There it is. He gets in for sight, see through the walls. Illegal in most games, encouraged in Overwatch. <laughs> You're working. You heard the right. There it is. DM blown up. Agility ah, goes down as well. Coma there with the kill. And they are going to get a little bit of a challenge here, Shanghai Dragons. Kamsu gets a bit ahead of himself, though. And that's a punish that may come back to haunt them. Well, KSF living for now. And you knew that D.Va was coming up. Like, it's definitely going to happen. <laughs> How does that happen? You are not allowed to rock and or roll fact fiction. They do pick up a couple kills. KSF does die, but that was kind of a foregone conclusion. Shax gets a nice hack too. Now they're just get stuffed into the corner. This is now getting a bit dicey here for Shanghai because there's three minutes 20 on the clock for the Valiant. The Valiant are forcing them all the way back. Yeah, playing very well. And the Valiant have everything in the world they could want. KSF is switching off a Widow is the only reason he doesn't have his ultimate. I wonder what the order of operations say. I mean, we've seen EMP Barrage all day, but you could also pile driver mine EMP. The world is your oyster if you were the Los Angeles Valiant. You really don't have a whole lot to work with here because the Dragons, you've got a boost. You've gone for wholesale changes on the roster now. Tracer, Soldier, all of the fixings. Sting takes down KSF. Point blank. Agility's looking for a multiple. Only gonna find the one. No, he takes Gomsu. Parting shot. And we lose Koma to the nades, or to the mines, rather, from Fact Fiction. Two points now for the Valiant with four minutes on the clock. 
I love roll kills. I don't know why, it just makes me laugh. Alright, now this is definitely going to be a switch into a 3-3 compensation. The last point of so many of these payload-based maps. It's very small, very choky, very corner-based, so you're going to see 3-3 on both sides. Yep, but it's so even now in terms of ults. So now it's any man. Who's going to play it better? Yeah. Well, if he's going for the change over to the Ana, so we have that going for us. Which is nice. I mean, that is nice, because now it really is a mirror. Who's better? Who's going to play it better? Because you're all pretty much even on ults as well. Let's say Ding with a little bit of a silence, just making himself known. And they're still hanging in here. Fact Fiction yeah. gets dated. No heals possible. He's at Goner. It was really, really smart play there from Shanghai to use the hack to isolate two members of the team. So when they hacked Kareev, Custa had to turn around, so that means there's no one up front, there's no disruption, and they use it to pressure down Fact Fiction, get him out of the fight. Three minutes left for the Valiant offense. Rinse, repeat. Wax on, wax off, until you get an ult. That move is just about an old man exploiting a boy for child labor. Hey, it's more common than you think, Hex. <laughs> so, Kareev. Looking for the shot. The shields are up, though. Nearly gets it. He's being so annoying in the back line, his ding, but he's not actually having a ton of success. What's well, Young getting uh, by his attack? Though. But he's, the moment he's not hacked, he's got to toss in this grab. Well, let's see how is this going to go because we got the boost now on a fact fiction. He's going to be looking to just hack people to bits with that hammer, but not quite. They aren't able to crack through the Valiant right now, trying to play this so carefully on their side of things. There's the EMP, and the Valiant looks like they're going to get sent back, although they are trading back and forth. Ding and Shaxx, the first to fall on both sides. Who oversteps? Grabs all over the place now, point blank, right in front of each other. There's Kobo with a delayed sound barrier. That might make the difference, and yes, the Valiant giving ground. It should, but Youngjin gets hacked, and he's got to back away. The Valiant take this moment to regain their positional advantage. Shatter comes in, Fact is down. Oh, but Fact, Fact is so low. Do we have another one? Yep, thrown out there, just barely missing it. Just non-stop fighting. This feels like it's been going on forever now. We're at a minute 40 left on the clock, and Agilities will cave. Gamsu with the nade on him, though, will get topped up, and we're just trading the Brigidas, but this favors the Dragons. They spawn closer to the cart. The Valiant know this, and the Valiant are backing off. It's the correct call to make, Hex. Yeah, what an absolute slobber knocker. That fight took forever to take. So now let's regain and take stock here of what these teams have to work with with less than 90 seconds on the Valiant offense. KSF will have another Graviton going into this. That's it for the Valiant offense. Luckily, there's nothing on the Shanghai defense. And they know Barrier was out too. This is a perfect time for grab. Do you think when the teams grab each other like that, they're just like, oh, this is awkward. Because it might happen again right here. This is so even, so even. There it is. Grabs immediately. EMP there. Follow up. Ding goes down. Damn it. Oh, this is a total wipeout. Gamsu, you gotta die quick. You need to come back into this fight as quickly as possible. Will they be able to? Oh man, it's gonna be way too fast. DM's got the grab, but can he even use it? You're gonna have the May. Nobody's gonna be able to challenge. Nope. The Valiant take the lead in the series, two to one. It's been a story of two maps, just about ultimate execution, ultimate abilities. There, big antis taking advantage of small mistakes from Shanghai. The Valiant take a two-one lead in the series. And what is uh? can only be described as a little bit of an upset potential. We'll see if they can close it out in map four when we return. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile. Forget to, 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 forget to
The Valiant, perhaps on the edge of an upset win here over the Shanghai Dragons. They just managed to grab it there on Eichenwald, in large part due to the Kareev, perhaps with the clutchest of plays towards the end of the first half. You don't hit that dart, that could be an entirely different fight. Your whole team gets EMP, you don't get a chance to hit the dart after that because, well, you can't use your abilities. And that's been the, the nice return of Kareev. He uh, dabbled a little bit last year on some DPS, but now he's in that flex position. And it just seems that he's got a good synergy with the rest of his team. Him and Custa were protecting each other really well. They're getting harassed and hacked, but it never really resulted in a kill or a solo kill in the back line. So you know, it's, it's been a, it's a very good match for Kareev. Uh, do, do, what I'm wondering right now, we just saw how it's breaking down in terms of uh, the score, how it's gone. Valiant taking the first map. Mm -hmm. Shanghai might be... Uh, Paying for the hubris a little bit, perhaps a little overconfident going into the series, you know, putting Envy in on that first map. Yeah. I mean, because there was a close first map. If they have Ding in that first map, is are we looking at a 2-1 situation right yeah. now in favor of Shanghai? I, uh, I don't really think it's that deep necessarily. I think they just wanted to run out Trying of Eva to go deeper on next. control. We've got to go deeper. We've got to go deeper. Wow. Well. The next level. <laughs> the next layer. Defensively coming out, Sombra 3-3. Well, I mean, I guess we just call it 3-2-1 from now on, but... All these terms get confusing. Yeah, it's exactly. the regular 3-3 plus Samba, and oftentimes you see the Ana in this as well. So that is the defense. Offensively, it's kind of a wait-and-see approach. Team's gonna look for early kills. It's a nice little headshot, but uh, bye bye <laughs> Oh, it seems you were gonna go back to spawn to switch. Well, let me escort you there. Let me go ahead and help you out. Just speed things up a little bit there. Meanwhile, they are getting bullied out here by Ding on this Farah. Well, again, Ding is just love and life. You got Kareev, who's going to be taking pot shots at him. And that's pretty much all he has to worry about. Yep. And getting hacked. But this Ana is just a little bit of pressure. You're putting yourself in harm's way. And yeah, that'll happen. That's that no bueno. Happen. That's no bueno. Gamsu, though. Got Shax. Yeah. Shax got Gamsu. Yeah, exactly. But it's still a one for one. But losing your tank, that just slows yeah, everything down. Not in this composition as much as anything else would. They are able to res it as well. Oh, there it is. So you get the mercy, and then you get the point blank barrage in the apartments. Out and out murder. Three kills in the blink of an eye. Yeah, you kind of knew that one was going to happen the moment he started dropping down, saw those silhouettes and just feasts. A very quick first take. Diem gets off of that Widow after the one life. Going to go Tracer instead here. And Tracer Farah is so good if you can communicate perfectly. It's like running dive with only one dive DPS because your rockets do the dive in for you. And then all that Tracer has to do is follow up the damage. You saw it earlier on the kill with Kareev. And now they're going to run a Widow as Los Angeles Valiant. KSF is going to be on that Widow. To try to deter the Fair Mercy from just doing whatever the heck they want. Shame for Coma, but that is going to give Luffy quite a bit of ult charge. So we've got the Nano coming online now, and Wings are here as well for Koma. EMP. Nice tag, that's the EMP exactly. Two of them get clipped by it. Yeah, and without a shield because your EMP, Youngkin. Actually, Youngkin didn't even get EMP, I don't think. No, there's only two that got uh, clipped by Ding and Gamsu. Huh. Well, he goes down anyway. KSF now putting in work, and Luffy unable to run away. Reset here for the Dragons. They're going to stay on this comp. Although KSF has done enough to prove that maybe you shouldn't stay on this comp. It's just weird to see. DM's gonna try to just take the duel with him. We're getting Widows again, Hex. <laughs> I was too surprised to cast it. It's like Dorado, and I, I'm just wait, wait, what? We haven't seen this in so long, it feels just completely foreign. Well, KSF just hit his infrared too, so he's gonna know there's another Widow on the field. It changes his style of play. Now knowing that DM's out there, DM's not gonna be able to catch him unaware. <laughs> That's how you handle it. That's how you get work done, and then you get greedy, and you try and uh, go for more. 
Looks like the res will go off. Koma bringing DM back into this fight, so DM time to earn it. Agility's his nanoed, but he's all alone. He's left his mercy. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Custer right now feeling perhaps a bit frustrated. And well, yeah, he gets to go back to spawn and think about it. Well, we've got a Widow Tool brewing on the rooftop over here as well. KSF takes a rocket, so he's got a backup. KSF gets anti Diem with a finishing blow. A team effort. We'll get the replay here. This is from DM's perspective of him just obliterating Shax. Yeah. Hey, there hey, you, you remember, go. Remember what you did to me in that rooftop earlier? I'm back. Exactly, yeah. and it looks like Dig just takes Fact Fiction out of the fight as well. So no minds here for the initial challenge on the second point. DM is gone. But I mean, Shax just keeps having the impact. He keeps coming up with the goods. Yeah, he's making DM's life miserable. The EMP comes down, gets two, but Shax and Grebo fall. And this is just delay time here unless they get something enormous out of these mines. Just I don't see second. happening. Split second, Custa. He's trying to be in there. He is going to delay just a little bit, but it is going to be a second point picked up here. Rapid fire coming in here from the Shanghai Dragons. Four minutes on the clock. So much room to work with. Comps has just been a nuisance. Let's see if we see any compositional changes as we go to third. A little bit of lower ceiling. A little bit difficult for the far to get a ton of work done. But they're going to stay on it. I feel like I've said they're going to stay on it a lot today. Usually in terms of where teams would switch comps, they've just been sticking with damage. I dig it. I would always prefer it. Dig though, with the boost. Oh, slept in the open. That's not gonna be good. Yep. Instant bio nade goes down. Gamsu was trying to body block, trying to help out. That's not gonna be the case. Valiant effort. They resurrect Diem. But they still have to wait for Dig. Ding is going to switch now. Now on to Sombra. Three minutes left, plenty of time. Yeah, now you got exactly. Diem though, gonna open the floor. Custa gone. There's Gamsu trying to capitalize on it. They may have overextended here, the Valiant. We may get some free push for the Shanghai Dragons. DM and KSF, that is just one of those duels that's going to eventually have to go down. Youngjin, though, once again, Shaxx, he's just a murderer. He just keeps coming in here and picking them off one after the other. Yeah, he's been very good. Uh, he's had some questionable EMPs, but his individual hat play in the back line has been so disruptive. Now we lose Ding as well. So far, the Valiant defense here on the third point looking very good. Two minutes 30 on the clock. They've whittled quite a bit of it off of the Shanghai Dragons. I mean, DM's putting on a show, but it doesn't matter. They're losing everybody else. At this point, this composition is becoming very interesting because you've got Gamsu, you've got Luffy with the boost. I mean, it's just kind of a, a spattering of everything. There are some changes. That makes a world of sense now. So Shanghai is, is the last couple of maps, they're making changes over the course of like two or three fights. We're like, okay, I'm dead, so I'm going to switch. It's not, I see this back to spawn everybody as a unit. I'm not certain how I feel about it just yet because it hasn't been ultra effective and it does seem to put them behind economically. The Bayern are going to take this moment to make switches themselves. So now we're back on 3 2 1 both sides. A little bit of a bait and switch there. Just hoping, hoping to catch him in the open wasn't quite the case. And so, Valent, they're still stable. They're still looking good. Gamsu gets nailed by these nades without the Divas around to mitigate him. No D Matrix. The bio is doing terrific work, and Shaq's coming over the top with the EMP, but it's not going their way. Instead, it's three coming in for the Shanghai Dragons. Yeah, huge play there, and you get a nano at the end. A post-EMP sound barrier to keep everybody alive. The EMP, maybe a little too press, people went down very quickly. Desperation time, you can boost in fact here. Big shot. That's huge, that's gonna keep him off the point. Fact Fiction has to play it safe, holding at the door. You're gonna have agility. He's just hanging out with that rally. So hard to kill, doesn't matter. He'll one before you. EMP going off though, can throw a wrench in things. Five of them hacked on the side of the Valiant and the Shanghai Dragons staying strong. Everybody's still up here for them. This is definitely looking like them picking up three points. They weren't able to achieve it on Eigenveld. Now, they'll get the job done. Nano boosted Brigida goes 1v6, lives through the whole thing. Support hero, by the way. Dragons find the way in the end. We'll complete the map with about 50 seconds remaining. So a little bit of time, a little bit of work, but some confidence here. A little bit of a grin there, you see? Yeah, he got to play Widow. Starting to pick up, yeah. yeah. And he was having fun. The rest of his team, not so much. But uh, the rest of them had to work for it. Hex. You know, he was just hitting headshots left and right. Now the Valiant must finish Dorado now, or we will be going to map five. And you know what? I'm OK with that a little defeated over here. And it's just, it's defeating when you you hit big ultimates. And this happened to the Valiant all day, where you're hitting big ultimates and- <laughs> Custa. 
Yeah, that's... Look that's, at that face. That's how they should feel. You hit these big ultimates, everyone's EMP'd, and then you lose two people right away because you're not in the right position or your tank's not up front where he needs to be and someone eats a big right click. Uh, it's happened with EMPs, it's happened with Gravitons where the follow-up on these game-winning, or fight-winning, at least, ultimates is simply not there. And the best teams in the league, that doesn't happen to. When you see New York with an EMP, you're like, they're winning this fight. Now, I'm not sure if it's just the positioning or the people aren't in the, in the spots that they need to be. Maybe bubble management isn't happening correctly so that someone's forward and they need that allied bubble. They don't get it. Now you don't have the energy. So it's, it's been when they have to go to 3-3, their ultimate ability usage has not been impressive. Individual plays all day have been actually been very good from all of the Valiant. When you're talking about fine-tuning a machine that's been, in some cases, in the works for months and been working fine for yeah. months. Whereas these guys, you know, still roster changes, still trying to make it work. Shanghai, perhaps still paying for having Envy in on that first map, giving him a crack at his old team. Yeah. Now, we're in a situation where we could be going to that map five hex unless the Los Angeles Valley can get the job done. That they was, need three points. That was, that was really cute tech there. To use the emote so you can see around the corner to see if there's an opposing widow in that, uh, well, opposing widow spot where she normally is without having to peek at all. It's the little things that make me a geek about this game. I love that stuff. Oh, KSF, the res is going to go off. Maybe there was a chance, though. KSF not going to take it. Getting forced back. You already have the... Well, I mean, you, you're going to have the threat of Ding in the skies. He has to play around it. Yeah, this is an interesting that fact is on the Orisa here for the offense rather than maybe a Wrecking Ball. It's going to be the only tank, but he's going to have that shield just cover the entire archway. Top gun, Agility takes out his opposing number. It's not the first time that Agility has no succeeded. Red. DM, though, brings down KSF. Slowing things down. DM still a threat. And yep, you go out in the open. They have to remember, but they have to relearn what it is to fear a Widow. You can't go out in the open when there's a Widow like that. That's just been, it's been a god tier Widow spot since the map was invented. Just to sit on that bridge. Because you can also rotate left over the flank and catch people coming out of spawn. Speaking of catch. Luffy goes down to KSF. It's been all Widows on Dorado. It's been phenomenal so far. This, we get some Widow play. We get some of the sniper action. And you know, DM, that's a spot that you're worried. I don't think that he's worried about a Genji coming over there like we've seen in the past. No, that used but, to be uh, the counter, right? Yeah, used to be it, right? Quite a while. But, uh, you know, just keeping an eye on things. DM decides it's now time to get to see through walls. KSF still a little bit off of uh, the end for sight. Yeah, so right now, Valiant are just trying to posture up through the archway. But they're just going to take so much poke, especially with the Infrasite up, that you can predict rockets onto a team easily. Oh, damage was done, though. Two kills. You could see they trying to set it up, trying to deny the barrage, but wasn't fast enough. Oof, there you go, KSF. That's the way. That is the way. Ding gets boosted, but he does not escape. KSF right now running game on him. Shanghai Dragons. They're going down, Hex. The defense crumbles, and it will be a first point picked up here for the Los Angeles Valiant. Excuse me, what? What just happened, KSF? Who is this guy? Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best. Oh, you can see the smirk, too. That's like, that's to the face of a, a Widow that's feeling it, which is the industry term. How was that Widow? They were feeling it. 20% scoped accuracy. One in five shots is a headshot. Yeah. It's not, not great. Not terrible. We've seen, yeah. It's respectable, I think is the... Yes. <laughs> KSF's gonna be able to see through walls, though, so that's gonna certainly help things. Maybe he'll start pumping those numbers up, Hex. I mean, he's not hitting the headshots, but he's doing a thousand more damage than Diem is. Diem's hitting a higher rate of criticals, and that's the shot that matters right there to take down the opposing Widow. Nice right, so to be careful. Does not want to get stunned into oblivion either. Just the games that you play, and then you get blown up! Rocket combo! Gonsu's gonna collect! Yeah, DM back in the mix now. He was resurrected. He's gonna be able to pick some shots apart as well. And it's only the combo in the sky left for the Valiant. Not the greatest of pushing a cart as we near only three minutes for the offense. Just cannot connect. So frustrating. But they are able to back off and they are able to stabilize. That's the important bit. So three minutes, like you pointed out. Valiant. Right on the doorstep of the second point now. Yeah, I wanted far be far at the All-Star game, but they told me we don't have five hours. <laughs> yeah. That's just so hard to hit rocket rocket, <laughs> but you know, when the movement is so erratic, you can't really predict. Brutal. What else is brutal? Hex mines! Mines are brutal, and the Valiant take full advantage. 
not on the mines, but of just getting the kills. <laughs> I mean, you got two supports here. That's a one fight. Another sleep in the corner. is going to be a late kill on a Gamsu. A lot of hat help. Pool donated over. And I think right now, Shanghai has to play passively. They can't peek doorways because you got this threat out there is proven more than effective on Widow. But they will be able to get back in here. The Soldier 76 on this flank right now is super interesting. They're all over the place. Shanghai actually has the Valiant somewhat surrounded. Oh. Come on! The fadeaway shot on the ding! Two kills. That was sick! Gamsu, though, making the plays right now for Shanghai. He's bringing it back. Poker by Crook. Shax is still in the mix. He gets brought in, and there it is. Ding point blank. Removes him, and it's just back and forth. This is out and out uh, chaos now. now. This is Valiant for sure. It's actually a really nice placement of the supercharger there late at the end. Pulls it behind, puts a shield back there, just walks forward through it. Supercharger is a win more ultimate. You're already winning. Let's win a little bit more. Toss it down. It's a game changer. Now the Valiants have to make a decision on what composition they want to run. Shanghai has already made their call. They're going down to the 3-2-1 as we enter third. Well, let's just, just silence, please. Oh, this is so frustrating. He gets that. Sets it up for it, right? But he's also in that 50-50 game of which door they're all going to come out of, and he's guessing it, and then that could have gone even further south for Shanghai. Shax gets detected momentarily. Yeah, Eight there is. yeah, gets the MP off regardless. Five of them hacked, and that's going to mean Gamsu's gone. Ding as well. Los Angeles Valley going to get a lot of ground covered here off of that one EMP. To me, the mark of a good Sombra is after your EMP, are you showing up in the kill feed? My favorite Sombras show up in the kill feed. They don't just bail. They're not just alt machines, right? So Shax, it looked like he translocated far away, but it was really good positioning because he gets back in and takes down the main tank right away. It's one thing to get EMP, build it up, and EMP a team. Almost anyone can do that. Can you kill people afterwards? Now we're going to find out. There's a lot of damage that's going to go down here. Fact Fiction just mowing them. Once you get that boost, you're deal so much hurt if you are a Rhine, and now it's going to be Dink moving in. Chroma instantly deleted. Dink could be suffering the same fate here, the sleep into it, and this is it. Tied situation, and the Valiant fighting back. They did not just roll over Hex. It's three to three. KSF put on a display, and the Valiant capitalized on fight-winning ultimates such as EMP. Nice debut from some of the new guys. We're going to do it all again in Dorado in just a second. So the Valiants on home turf here. They're in the lead of the series, two to one. It looked grim. They were struggling on the first point, but in the end, they were able to tie it up three to three. The Shanghai Dragons now on the ropes. Yeah, new look Valiants. Not that these guys haven't played for the Valiant before, but a different style, some different heroes we're seeing. And it looks really good from Shax and KSF, who I would say, you know, new wish to at least the roles that they're playing now. And Fact Fiction has done a good job and more than serviceable on several of these. Probably won them a, a late Nepal stage with his gusto and his play. And they look good. They look really good. This Widow v. Widow battle has definitely been, um, yeah, it's been pretty close. KSF overall just doing more damage than DM helping out his team get kills. Oh, man. He's keeping an eye on Fact right now. He's all over the place. Well, that's Hammond life. Yeah, he's, he's just rolling, rolling in the back line now, all the way up on the high ground as well. They're just wrapping. It looks like it's gonna be an arch play here for the Valiant as far as the defense are concerned. It's pretty standard. Oof. There's the shot though. There it is. Dink gets his bells rung. It's just, it just feels like mini fights all over the place. That's yeah. what's going on here. It's everybody's got a duel. Everybody's hoping to come out ahead. And then eventually somebody's gonna hit double <laughs> rockets and then get pummeled. Slept again. That's another huge sleep from Kareev. Back to back as well. He's gonna set it up for Gamsu to go down and DM once again the fadeaway on agilities, but now it's on the Shanghai Dragons. We are in overtime. Yeah. They are not allowed to leave the point, but it's looking like they're gonna pick it up. Huge numbers advantage. 
Youngkin's able to take out Kareeb as it was a 4v3, it's just a stun and a massacre right there. Okay, Shanghai, when you capture the point in overtime, you don't get any more time. Someone has to stay on the card. Let's not get the Shang-9 again. <laughs> like you said, Young Jin, you know? Oh, it's tragic. I can't even think of it. Haunts Actually, apparently, I've been thinking about it all day. Haunts his <laughs> nightmares. But now this is all or nothing. Perfect play from Shanghai from here on out. They are not allowed anything else. Looking for the body? Yes, KSF's going to find it. A little bit of pressure applied here, though. And they're hanging in there. For now, Kareev, though, dropping. And there it is, Gamsu with the mines. Let's go, the initiate on the high ground, trying to destabilize, and that is going to be a, su a successful first pick. DM, opening the door. Youngjin has not left this card since it started rolling through. He has been its constant companion. Gamsu going down hurts. EMP uh, catches four. Another sleep from Kareev, who just does not miss. And sure enough, this has got to be it. Back Fiction, unfortunately, the healing wasn't there for Kareev. Not going to keep him up. They're still making progress. Yeah. Every meter matters here for the Shanghai Dragons. This is still remarkable, but they're going to go down immediately. Oh, Gamsu gets blown up, and that's got to be it. Yes. The Valiant will halt the cart there. Not a second point picked up, but still quite a bit of ground covered, given the fact that Shanghai were in overtime. Yeah, very nice overtime push. You'll take it. Just love that Young Jin just got boosted, just sat that cart the whole time. You know it was in the front of his mind. And there Never they go. Again. Shanghai trying to send us to a five here. That's a very good push. Dorado's a, a pretty defensively favored first point map because of the archway, because of the angles you have to take on the offense. So very solid push in overtime. Trying to send us to a decisive control map. See what the Valiant have. Valiant have two minutes in their bank. Plenty of time to work with. And it is pretty much dead even. 55 to 53. Paper kills. Taking a look at the KSF replay here. Picks up two. Yeah, well, that one, come on. Oh, that's a Korean kill. Change the kill feed right now. That one I'll give to KSF. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're not really hitting a moving target. <laughs> You're just uh, an executor at that point. Uh, Kareev's been hitting darts like a madman. I mean, the, the Ana meta coming back into this, I mean, the, the meta has shifted so drastically, it's just hard to get really used to it again. But man, the individual skill plays are so fun to watch. I and mean, has hit just dart after dart. He got two, I believe, on, um, on Ding, just that push. Just that round. Yeah. I love the Orisa play here. They played it on defense as well. Again, that's the tech. He's looking for the Widow in the window. Left side of your screen. That's so cool. Spotted. What do they hold, though? I mean, minute 30, and we're about to have the first fight, the real fight, go down, apart from the skirmishes happening on the fringes. There it is. DM. Instant res. Instant shot. Yep. Hassan position. But now the res is used up, so you got to get the job done now if you're the Valiant. Not allowed any more mistakes. And you got to get through here quick, because they picked up that first point. It's four to three right now, the Shanghai Dragons. They're the ones who are feeling good. They should be feeling confident Ooh. running right into each other here. This is awkward. Close quarter battles. You are wondering, are they going to succeed here? The Valiant, this would be a big upset if they were capable of it. The sleep on Gamsu. That split second might cost them. T-Rex rocket from Agilities. Not as close as can be. They take away. Back to slept here. I don't think there's enough follow up there. Just kind of a dart you throw it at random. Agilities looking to close these people out. Mercy, how do you lie? Yeah. So slippery. So slippery all over the place. And then just gets slammed by Gamsu, but too much damage taken here by the defense. Ding still flying around somewhere. You can see KSF like, where did this guy go? Okay, he's over there, but that's the first point picked up now. No and well, we're gonna have a similar situation, Hex. Overtime with. Yeah. I mean, that's why you don't have a defense coming back in right now. There's no need to fight right there. A nice shot! What a great opening blow for this next push here. 70 meters, and they'll win the match. So close. Just looking for that shot. Just going to make it up. Now KSF's going to have that long line. He's they're, waiting they're, to see. Shoulder shake. It looks like they're setting up a flank. They're trying to get people through the left side doors. 
Yeah, point blank minds here. Gongshu getting pummeled. Agility's gonna soften him up, and there it is. We've got the Nano. Ding is opening it up as well. He gets slept, but he still takes on Fact Fiction. That might throw a wrench in things. DM. Oh, it's Agility's. Three kills immediately looking for the fourth. He's gonna find it. Luffy goes down, and that Shanghai Dragon's wiped out. Can we give another one of those to Kareev? Because yet another sleep dart on a Farah hits the ground. Oh, it is not where Farah wants to be. She'd like to be in the friendly skies. They There's got the a long green box. They are far away right now. It's tough. And KSF's gonna be watching this door. He's gonna be looking for Diem. Okay, so Ding is in position. He could touch Gamsu's here as well. He's gonna be able to roll in and contest. They slept they Gamsu! They slept him! That's, is that miscommunication? What happened there at the end? Los Angeles Valiant, they sneak it three to one. Uh, Gamsu was trying to roll in. He got slept by Kareem. Hammond is your play there to touch the cart because he's so mobile, he can get shields, and they sleep him before he can get there. Shanghai gifting away, perhaps. Right, Winnable I, series. I've just been told we have a replay of it. We're going to get to it after this. We've got the handshakes first. Los Angeles Valiant with the huge yeah. win over the Shanghai Dragons. Well-deserved victory. And you can see Custa, he's been he's getting peeled off because I think we need to hear what he has to say. Emily's getting ready. We're going to have that interview with our one of our winners. And I mean, yeah, so hyped. Just going from the face that he had earlier before going into this last phase of the map to now, let's find out what Custa has to say. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Custa from the LA Valiant. Congratulations again. Epic win tonight. Now, the Valiant's really gaining momentum here. You guys won four out of your five matches. And on top of that, tonight was a huge upset because everybody was favored, favoring the Shanghai Dragons. So how do you feel? What's going on in your head? Yeah, it was really good. Obviously, we came in today having a completely different plan. You know, obviously, Space Not Playing was something different, but we were confident in our ability to sort of uh, play the style that we thought they were going to play and play against it uh, better. So it turned out really well. Uh, big props to Space, you know, yeah, all-star player taking a seat when we needed it in the match. And real quick, can you just comment on Shax? Because this was the first time that you guys have integrated him into a roster. Yeah, Shax. Absolutely incredible player. I uh, told last second, you know, with a little bit of practice that you need to learn Sombra, you need to be able to play for the team. Obviously played phenomenally throughout the entire series, so you big shout-outs to him. And finally, you guys are going to face the Hangzhou Spark, London Spitfire, and the Vancouver Titans coming up. Which match are you most looking forward to? Honestly, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the Vancouver match. Uh, it's, you know, they're a juggernaut of a team they haven't lost, so it'd be really cool to take this momentum in do something and, you know, make an upset. Absolutely. Best of luck, Custa, to you and the Valiant. Yeah. All right, well, thanks, guys. Similar next, back to you guys. All right, thank you, Emily, and thank you, Custa. And thank you, Custa, for the frank answer as well. If you want to go up against the best, that's a good way to measure the gap. Exactly. See, what, see exactly how it feels right now to go up against a team that's undefeated. Are we close or are we far away? Exactly. I mean, that's a question that's going to get answered. Yeah, that's what you're looking for as well. You've got these plays. Let's take a look at that final play, though, because that is left us scratching our heads wondering I what think exactly I saw happened. The sleep. I saw it on the overhead, I think. So long ways away, gets the sleep on Gamsu. They were going to halt him anyway and get him pulled off. They don't have a backup plan to get there. Valkyrie unable to touch the verticality of the cart. Kareev did it all day. Yeah. All day with the sleep darts. You got to give it to Kareev. What a monster. Yeah. Every time. Just ruining hopes and dreams for Shanghai. So sick. Let's take a look at the stage three standings now that we've had that match. Look at that. Valiant bumped up into the seventh spot. Dragons dropped below the line. They're in 10th now, Hex. Oh, uh, and if you showed these to me two weeks ago, I would not have, I straight up would not have believed you. Valiant and Outlaws are both in the stage three standings here. Valiant have a much more difficult schedule, but if they go into it, then they're going into it beating good teams. So good for them. Shanghai with that loss will fall out of it. It's a small sample size, so uh, every one of these matches is important. Shanghai still two and one in a decent position. They're still in the running. They're still in the running, but you're right. Absolutely for Valiant. They're going to go up against the best. Now's the time. If you're going to shine. I mean, we saw some crazy plays coming out today. KSF, Kareev. These guys are hitting shots and making plays like they were today. Well, I mean, let's go ahead and actually meet our player of the match. Owen by HP. And it's going to be Kareev. Should be absolutely no surprise. Single abilities were winning fights, winning maps for this team. Kareev was hitting sleep darts like an absolute man possessed right here. He gets this EMP, which very well wins them Eichenvalda. And then he completely put the fear of God into Ding's Farah. Shot after shot. Yep, there it is. I mean, it's just 
it, I love it with the Hanna CC that's, that's possible to crowd yeah. control. You get these sleeps in there. You have to be mechanically talented. You have to be quick and read the game. Yeah. No. You have a small window to react, and Kareev has been doing it all day, along with the damage, the healing. Uh, sleep on those kind of targets are guaranteed kills to the rest of your team. Just You saw the, the Widow just cleans it up, whatever. I mean, it's very different than sleeping someone in a big ball of 3-3. So against these DPS comps, where guys are going after you, getting dove on by these Varus, having a Widow, or having an Ana like that is an absolute saving grace. Well, he got very excited about the San Francisco Shock. I mean, they, they were going to win, but it's good times. Hex. Coming up next, we have Watchpoint. We're not done here at the studio yet. Yeah. Hex, you're going to be on the I'm going to go do it, I think. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go yeah. down there. Just show up, crash the party. <laughs> Great. All right, I'm looking forward to it, guys. Stay tuned. We're taking a quick break, and we'll be right back to end the show with Watchpoint. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Toyota, official North American partner of the Overwatch League. Toyota, let's go places. Hey, man, what's up? You need anything for today? Nah, man, I think I'm set. Big day today, man? Yeah, huge. Let's play some Overwatch.